yes. So this is a pre-recording of lecture number six for our mini course. Um, I need to show you some examples that you work out by your own, uh, preferably before attending the lecture itself. I don't think it will take a lot of time, let's say 10 minutes, 20 minutes, I don't know specifically, but that's it. Okay, so let us share the screen and see a couple of uh, things that we want to see. So we are sharing the screen and I need uh, to start Pandat. Uh, yeah, it, it is the same one that you have. So it is the educational version. So let us create a new workspace, like you know. Let us load the thermodynamic database, which is the one uh, FE Miani, which is the one we use for steels, basically. Let us select Just the components of iron carbon system. Yeah. Let us select, we can do phases excluding diamond and graphite as well here. And we can at first start producing a solidification simulation curve. What can I do? Well, let us use. 1% carbon and 99% iron, which could be something real for some very high carbon steels, but it is for the moment just an example. So what can we produce with this? We can produce a solidification curve, which is linking the solid phase fraction FS from zero to one to the solidification temperature. We have run it, uh, we have done this exercise before using child solidification. We can do the same thing using the equilibrium data, thermodynamic data, and producing results according to the leverage rule. Just switch from this one to this one and then you see a slightly different curve now you click with your mouse you copy data here and you paste them on the other curve which is done like so the red one are the level rule equilibrium values the blue curve it is the child simulation curve. And that that is what we have done in, I think, lecture number one. In, uh, I think you are able to do it by your own. So let us now make some slight variation in our solidification simulation and add in the equilibrium level rule, some extra outputs. Here, you open this window, as for the table, you edit the table, and you add some variables or function. You can add the variables there, on the left column, or you can even insert, you press Ctrl M, or you should do it. And you can see which is the kind of functions that you can use. You can use uh, absolute value, square root, and numerical, this double slash, it is the numerical derivative. So for the moment, let us forget about it. I want to put at first the solid fraction, you can type it as well, the solid fraction Fs, and uh, we will use this version. 
So it is the square root of the solid phase fraction. And then uh, I still will use minus T and we will make uh, this derivative of temperature T for respect or the solid phase fraction. We could also add the uh, absolute. Most of the people is using absolute values. I prefer continuity, so I just prefer to insert the minus sign, but then we can discuss it afterwards. And then we can type it the, the value of the numerical derivative with the square root of the solid fraction, OK? And this adds more tables to a table which is generated in Pandat, and you can then export by means of any other software. Typically, we are using Excel. In this mini course, maybe we will use also Octave to get data and to work them, them out, OK? But if you want to produce graphs inside our Pandat, then we should uh, add some of them, like in the, this set extra outputs menu. And then we want to see how is going now this value. So put the temperature here. No, we, we will put the solid phase fraction here. And this numerical derivative, and this will be our first graph. Then I want to see the same temperature, but depending not on the solid fraction, but on the square root of the solid fraction. Okay. And these are the relationship between temperature and solid phase fraction. This is graph. And this graph zero, the relationship between uh, the square root of the solid fraction. Then we add uh, one more graph here, which is uh, the numerical derivative of the temperature with the solidification curve. We are working with the lever rule, but it is very simple to switch uh, to Shile model. And then once again, we will add the square root of the solid fraction and the numerical derivative of temperature with the solid root of the solid fraction. OK? We save this condition. Lecture. Six example one. Yeah, we hope that I have done everything properly. And then we will produce this solidification curve like we have done. But we will also evaluate the numerical derivatives according to the solid fraction or the square root of the solid fraction, which is the one value used in the Professor Sindoku criterion. This is the reason for me for adding this value. So we have produced here is the child. No, no, no. Here is the lever rule curve. which uh, has been produced here, and it is exactly the same of this red curve before. And this is the numerical derivative of this solidification curve according to the derivative with the solid phase fraction. This is just a solidification curve, just plotting the same values, but using the X 
axis, not fs, but the square root of fs. And in the following graph, in graph one, we have the slope as a numerical derivative of this curve. No, the slope of this curve here. And here we have this curve and here we are plotting the square root uh, of the solidification curve. So for what concerns Professor Sindoku criterion, you go into the window view and you go into the property window of the active window and you want view. You close this one. And you should select your property window. And you should select a value. Yeah, finally it is there. We want to have as for Professor Sindoku criterion, values of the square root of the solid fraction from 0.9 to 0.99, which is done here. And you should fix uh, those values, maybe avoiding those negative values because they are totally unuseful. So this is dimensional, it is still a temperature. So these are Celsius degrees. And we should evaluate the maximum of this uh, numerical derivative function. So the maximum of this numerical derivative function, we can get by our mouse, but we could also do something different, having a look at the tables. But for the moment, we get that this is 405, uh, 459 degrees. So going back uh, to this graph, we can get the value here. This is the iron carbon phase diagram in a recent publication by Professor Sinduku in uh, this is linking practical results from different tests, mainly related to welding. So the odd cracking susceptibility, and this is done for 0.7 carbon content. We are a little bit out of this curve going up there, so you can work out your own values in um, and try to tell me if this is an important result, correct result, especially for your own uh, um, calculations using Pandat or not. So this is the criteria maximum of this numerical derivative. Maybe we can see clearly here and this is from 0.8 but normally I prefer to plot from 0.9 to 0.99 and this is another paper by Typhoon Soisal now he has done his PhD with Professor Ku and is working in a university in Turkey and so here you can see his paper results on the the equilibrium solidification, which is exactly the same thing that we are doing here. In uh, what I would like to do now, let us think if we can reproduce this, I don't know yet, this 340 could be for this um, carbon steel, which 0.7 carbon 
let us go back to Pandat and um, file open file. We will open. if we can find it uh, immediately. This lecture six example zero one, open. And we will modify it. We will give this name solidification example two. So this is a text file. You can modify it inside Pandat or in any software for editing character, so not precisely Microsoft Windows. So we will give to Carbon 0 0.7 weight percent, and all the things uh, remain the same as for our graphs uh, and so on. So we will save it uh, like lecture six, example, Z, example two, save. And then we will create a new workspace in order not to make too much mess. And then we will run this batch file you can find in your own directory here. So we wanted to check whether so we have done lever rule solidification here and then we have evaluated the slope of this curve here with the numerical derivative with the minus or you can use absolute if you would like because this is a smooth curve and then we have plotted the same values, but using FS with the square root and then with the temperature as well. And we've been evaluating finally the value of this slope of the curve. And we have obtained a value which, which we can get by our mouse and our eyes which is something, this is annoying, something around, uh, let me check, something around uh, 373, 72, then we could be more precise. And let us go back to calculation of Typhoon Sol Solisal and Sindoku as well. And so these values are pretty close. Uh, it is 332, and here it is. 370, which is OK as for my own uh, uh, feeling. Please consider that all these values uh, we are considering, it's about ranking the cracking susceptibility of different alloys. So you can work out your calculation like Benjamin Nazar has been doing previously and we can do things. So what it could be my first thing here, after this quite long introduction that will not be properly, I want you to understand that we are using this value, the numerical derivative, I don't like this, especially this. let us type it better. In a, so the, the numerical derivative of T of any solidification curve, lever, shile, shile with this diffusion, any other model 
including, but you will always have a relationship with relationship between temperature and solid phase fraction. You can express whatever you want. And this is Q criterion, which is mostly using the, the all the paper that I have uh, seen mostly with the child curve. But this is just mathematics. You can type by your own. You should uh, demonstrate myself and tell me if I am wrong. That we can make this value. So we can link this Sindoku criterion, numerical derivative, to this one value. Why I want to have this specific numerical derivative? Because I can link it to other values for other situations. So in this presentation, we have been uh, uh, discussing lecture number five, and uh, it could be possible to hear the whole presentation, which is a commercial presentation you can obtain from EOS. Uh, and also. Uh, try to have some. Information from this open paper. Which for nickel alloys. Says that the cracking susceptibility including this nickel base super alloys. It is important and linked to this value has been discussed in recent papers that we have considered in the previous lecture. But also for this kind of materials, you should not only mitigate the cracking problem, but you should take care of controlling the grain size. You can discuss it in a full physical metallurgy course or a metallurgy course that for most of the application, room temperature application, you want to have a small grain because in the whole patch equation, this is linked to any strength properties. But in the higher temperature range, the thing is not delighted. So in this um, commercial presentation. We have seen that we can solve uh, in process cracking by considering numerical considering the output of our uh, calculations according to this criterion of uh, cracking susceptibility originally developed for welding but working for many other materials. We can use the, the data from this uh, recent uh, metallurgical and material transaction paper by Guanan Tang and other authors here that consider the Q criterion improved in a way, but uh, for a short course like we have, we have better to discuss only this value and not trying to improve it, but to extend the value of this numerical derivative in other fields. So, um, previous uh, talk, we've been calculating this uh, solidification curves using these uh, compositions, and we have obtained um, the values for the numerical derivative uh, for the solid phase fraction going to one, not precisely one, but going to one. So we tend to use 0.99 for the solid phase fraction square root. I would like to test our ability after maybe listening to this um, presentation, if you have not done it yet. on discussing the improvement of several 3D printing alloys and extending them to other compositions. So we have faced, not fully solved, of course, just using thermodynamic data. It would be crazy if we could solve everything just using thermodynamic data, but we can consider them 
then we can consider whether or not we want to obtain small grains. For instance, for aluminum alloys would be fine. For austenitic stainless steels, which are in the data of this uh, discussion presentations, meaning would be nice. I don't think it would be a good idea for anything like this Inconel 939 uh, that has been developed for this specific uh, purpose. So we will be able to deal with this, but not for the whole, whole uh, process. I mean, you should have much more expensive tools than we are using now, but for an introduction uh, uh, and open course, like we are playing the game, uh, it's okay to use uh, those data to avoid uh, these uh, micro cracks. So it would be a good idea to avoid micro cracks like they have done here, but it would be important also to link those data like this one and this one to grain size formation. So this is the compositions and then this is part of uh, like we have viewed in our iron carbon uh, batch file. Um, in this previous discussion, we can cut and paste and insert the proper database. We are using an open database that I've been adapting for copper alloys, which is containing a lot of elements, but not all. We will see here that we lack tantalum, which uh, we can improve, produce maybe later on or what else. But for the moment, we are happy to discuss those results like uh, the Guanantang paper in our own results. And for the moment, that's all.